Mr. Mahagut Chair, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Labour Party about the crisis in Ukraine and the governmental response. And I want to just to first express my solidarity and that of my party with the people of Ukraine who have been enduring now an entire month of the brutal bombardment and horrific onslaught uh, represented by the Russian invasion. <clears throat> and despite some indication just in recent days of a scaling down of the siege on Kiev, there's no uh, indication really that this horrendous suffering will end soon. And we know just how brutal uh, Putin's imperial regime is. And I'm conscious that we're standing here in this peaceful corner of Europe while just on the other side of Europe, we're seeing this unthinkable atrocity being perpetrated and in such a swift, uh, and it's un unfolded in such a swift passage of time. I think that's what's caught, what, one of the reasons why it's, it's, it's so truly shocking to us. It is a crime, it is a, the, the war itself is a crime, and there's undoubtedly been a huge array of war crimes committed by the Russian, uh, by, the, uh, by Russian forces in the course of the war. I spoke yesterday in this house, Tishak, about having attended the funeral of Pierre Zakrzewski, and indeed we owe Pierre and his colleague Alexandra Kuvshinova, who was killed alongside him in an attack outside Kiev, we owe them and other war reporters a great debt of gratitude for shining a spotlight on the atrocities being committed by Russia and on the suffering being endured by the Ukrainian people, and that. Uh, and, it's, uh, and, and without that sort of frontline reporting, we, we wouldn't be as aware of the scale of the, uh, of the appalling devastation being endured by Ukraine. And I think, as I've said, it's particularly shocking because it's in Europe. It's, it's happening in Europe. Uh, it's particularly shocking because of the speed with which it's, been, it's unfolded. And it's particularly shocking because of the scale uh, of devastation that it's caused. We're witnessing this appalling siege of the people of Mariupol. We're witnessing four million people having fled their own home, uh, their own country uh, into other EU states uh, in the course of just over four weeks. And we're also, of course, witnessing um, yet another manifestation of the brutal rule of, of Vladimir Putin. And it, it brings to mind, certainly, uh, the, um, in recent history, the sort of war that Putin conducted through proxy, through Assad in Syria, and we saw the brutal siege of Aleppo and the enormous suffering of the Syrian people under that, under that uh, attack. Uh, it also brings to mind, of course, other wars being conducted and other peoples who are enduring and suffering brutal bombardment, um, thinking in particular of the people of Yemen in what has sometimes been referred to was a forgotten war, but an absolutely brutal war in which we're seeing, again, civilians bearing a huge brunt, and which again is being waged uh, largely uh, through complicity by proxy with Saudi Arabia. And I was glad to stand outside the Saudi Arabian embassy on, on, in Dublin on Saturday to protest that war and the war in Ukraine too. But the, looking at our state's response, uh, I think it's clear that there has been an enormous and very welcome outpouring of generosity among, uh, among all of us, among communities across Ireland. And I think, and I do want to acknowledge, also the speed and uh, generosity with which government has responded. Uh, Tishik, you spoke about, um, you and Minister Humphreys and Minister Gorman spoke about some of, the, uh, some of the ways in which government has responded. I was glad to visit uh, one of the Ukraine support centres, the one nearest to me in Cork Street, in Dublin 8 just last week and to meet with officials from Department of Social Protection, to meet with staff who had volunteered from the Citizens Information Service, from the Department of Justice and from other state entities. And again, that is true public service, uh, uh, to see officials uh, adapting so swiftly in order to assist people arriving from Ukraine. Uh, I also went to visit um, the volunteer run service in the free shop on Clarendon Street, just a few, just about 100 metres from here, uh, been set up by a, a number of, uh, uh, of, of volunteers to provide um, necessary items, basic things for Ukrainian families and individuals fleeing here, some of whom I'm told have come and some of whom I've met who've come with no more than a change of clothes and whose needs are, are, are really uh, very extreme and who, many of whom, as others have said, have left behind loved ones, fa fathers, husbands, parents in Ukraine. So I think the scale of human suffering is, is very evident and I think it's really welcome to see the great generosity with which this state has responded and to see us opening our doors to 15,000 people. There are a number of, of, uh, of, um, of points I think we do need to look at uh, because clearly the need is extensive and the scale of the challenge is, is immense. Uh, we know that there have been uh, Im uh, immense, uh, immensely strong offers of support and the Red Cross are doing hugely important and impressive work in coordinating those. Uh, we do know also though that it may well come to a situation where as Minister O'Gorman has said we will have to look at short-term housing 
funding measures. I have indicated to Minister O'Gorman and to Minister McEntee that there, are, uh, there is capacity to provide, for example, sprung structures, temporary accommodation on, a, on an emergency basis. But my colleague, Senator Rebecca Moynihan, has also pointed out, as our housing spokesperson, the need for a longer-term housing strategy and to ensure that uh, there is a revision to the Housing for All strategy and a whole-of-government response should uh, the housing need uh, endure for longer and should there be no end, uh, no, no short-term end to the, to the war. So there are also concerns, of course, around the schooling of, of uh, children and the many children who are coming here. And again, it's really welcome to see the way in which schools are opening their doors, to see initiatives like the INTO taking on the provision of information in Ukrainian and Russian to families and parents uh, to, en to, to enable a smooth trans transition into schools here. I've seen uh, on a visit recently to Ballyvaughan in County Clare, um, fantastic community response also, including the school, the school response to, uh, to, um, to, to those those coming here and fleeing such such devastation. Um, uh, but on the schooling issue, we do need to ensure that uh, that uh, that all the necessary supports are provided for, in particular the language supports. And on the arrival, while the Ukraine support centres and the uh, centre in Dublin Airport have been really impressive, really superb, uh, uh, we still do need to ensure that there's a central point of contact and that no matter where refugees come into the country, they are receiving the same level of support. And so my colleague Deputy Howland last week spoke about concerns in Ross Lair where volunteers were doing a huge amount of work and I think that matter has been addressed. Uh, but it's certainly uh, the case that we need to ensure there's sufficient levels of support in Shannon and Cork airports and in other uh, and and wherever uh, refugees are arriving. Uh, in terms of the employment prospects, I think we're all very conscious. And again, many of us who've met uh, Ukrainians coming here, we're very conscious. Many are highly skilled. Many are able to continue working if they've been working remotely in Ukraine, and and all are anxious to uh, to get work and to get jobs. And I'm very much welcome Minister Humphreys' uh, um, highlighting of the employment. Uh, mechanism. Uh, but again, supports will be required. And uh, as a trade unionist, I'm, I'm concerned to ensure that, sh that nobody coming here will be exploited and to ensure that people are protected, especially those who don't have English, who don't have, have uh, 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 sufficient levels of English language skills. And I do commend SIP2 and other unions for again committing to provide refugees with information in their own language about workers' rights and about job prospects here. I think that's been really, uh, really welcome. Um, um, initiative. Um, could I also, uh, Tisha, just speak a little about uh, other uh, ways in which we in Ireland can show support for Ukraine? Because clearly one huge way is through our welcome of, of refugees here but, and, and through our provision of humanitarian aid, and you've spoken about that. Uh, but I do also believe that at a diplomatic level we should be using all the non-military means at our disposal as a neutral state to support Ukraine, to support their accession to the EU, and I'm really glad to see Minister Coveney indicating that support along with a small number of other EU states. Uh, and on the, but also on the expulsion of diplomats. And I very much welcomed your announcement yesterday, which, as it happened, was in response to my uh, uh, question at Leaders' Questions about the expulsion of four senior officials from the Russian embassy here. But I do believe we should go further, and I do believe we should now move to expel the Russian ambassador. We did act not, uh, not across the EU27, but as one of a small number of EU states which moved to expel diplomats yesterday. And again, I welcome that because I think that's a really important uh, uh, diplomatic means at our disposal to express our strong condemnation in the strongest possible terms of Russia's brutality. But I think we should go further now and expel the Russian ambassador too. Um, uh, and I think as, a, as uh, somebody who has always been a member of an internationalist party, for us in Labour, as a member of the Party of European Socialists, it's hugely important that we show a cons we stand up against this assault on democracy and this assault on uh, the sovereignty of a peaceful democratic state that we're seeing unfold before our eyes and that's why we need to take all the measures we, that are available to us to show our support for Ukraine, to show our support for the people of Ukraine and finally to show our support for the for the government of Ukraine, for President Zelensky and I want to end Tishuk by just expressing my own um, uh, I suppose, you know, welcome for the fact that, that, that President Zelensky will be addressing this house next week and to ask that that, that would be live, live broadcast. I think it's very important. A lot of people want to see that. A lot of people want to watch the address as it comes to us. And I know there will be many 
Ukrainian citizens now here in Ireland who might like to come into this house to watch that uh, to watch that address and if that were possible I think that would be a very welcome gesture if we were to I presume the Ukrainian ambassador Larissa Grasko whom I have met on a number of occasions I presume will be here but it would also I think be a really uh, positive gesture of solidarity with the Ukrainian people to have a strong presence in the house of the Ukrainian community of members of that community here in Ireland so Taoiseach just to add, ask again that we would we would use all means at our disposal to convey our strong condemnation of Russia and our strong solidarity with the people of Ukraine as they endure this horrific onslaught.